All right, we're starting. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm Lena. I'm from Germany. I'm 21 years old and I study um, psychology. And yes. Okay. Uh, so what kind of regulations are there in Germany right now to protect people during the virus? Um, the government recommended to wear um, masks outside. So um, probably like everyone is wearing a mask to, um, when they go for grocery shopping or just outside. And um, yeah, today on Monday, um, a few shops were allowed to um, uh, open again for just about um, 800 um, quarter meters. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> yes, so um, this is allowed and um, yeah, it's basically it. Yeah, so everything's been pretty pretty much on lockdown. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, a lot of people were not allowed to um, to work, so there are a lot of people who are struggling with financially problems, and um, yeah, there's a lot of um, cafes, restaurants, shops, hotels are closed, and yeah. <laughs> what has your day-to-day -day life been looking like? Okay. Uh, sometimes I work. Uh, I work at a um, at a shop and um, so in a grocery shop um, about two times a week so that's what I do um, next to university and um, yeah I try to study at home sometimes so when we get emails from our professors or something that we can do and um, yeah I work out at home I uh, read a lot I um, have a lot of zoom calls and meetings online yeah uh, you're still learning at university you still have online classes and everything uh, yeah sometimes yeah but your education's been fairly interrupted by yeah yeah i think so okay is it scary for you to work at a grocery store a uh, public place like that yeah it's okay about um so the shop where i work is kind of um small mm -hmm. and um so that's okay, and most of um, um, the customers are yeah very friendly, and so um, yeah, it's been okay. <laughs> okay, have there been any significant challenges during this time? Um, yeah, I think just the isolation itself is a challenge for every one of us. So if you're not allowed to see your uh, yeah friends, family, or grandma, grandpa especially because um yeah now, have there been any any good things about the isolation has there been a silver lining any blessings that you've experienced yeah i think it's uh also it can also be a chance so this kind of isolation um because people are like forced to slow down and not always being like into work and school and uh, yeah, I think that's a good thing about it that people maybe think more about stuff like their the way they they live consumption and stuff like that. Has your view of of those things changed personally? Um, yeah, a bit. I think um, it's hard to tell. Um, I mean, the past year I have been. Um, um, researching a lot about like climate change and the crisis and everything so um, and this crisis also I think it's kind of a sign that it's like nature is showing us to uh, slow down and do so do something about it and not yeah. always um, yeah like go on and more like <laughs> okay <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I do so okay. in terms of the broader future you think things are looking up do you have a different view of of where things are going um I, i'm not sure but i hope uh so so i hope that people maybe changed uh their, the way they live and yeah see the world and yeah and you think the climate will improve um because of the outbreak mm, yeah I'm, I'm not sure because it's not i mean during this time uh i mean the um the carbon emissions are significantly going down, especially like in China, that's like, I think a, a quarter less or so um, than normally. So that's um, 
good, but I mean, we have to change things uh, continually and keep keep it like that. So I'm I'm not sure if people are going to understand that they are they need to change something like um, not only for like two or three months for the lockdown. So, but for yeah the rest of their lives basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you really worked on improving yourself during these times? Uh, yeah, I started filming videos. I'm not sure if you saw it on YouTube. So that's uh, kind of nice because I always wanted to do that. I always liked like uh, photographing and filming and stuff like that, but I never really, um, yeah, I thought I re I didn't really have the time and I saw what, oh, what are people going to think about me or stuff like that. But and now I thought, okay, I'm just at home. I'm alone. So <laughs> I'm just going to do that. And uh, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Um, if you could say something about your experiences, your personal experience to the world, um, is, is there anything that you would say? I think I would just say that every like negative thing or crisis happening to us can always turn out to something positive as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's it's something would I, that I would say. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> so okay. you have a call to action for the rest of the world, for other people in your community, for people across the country? Do you have something that you think that they should do to change their ways? Cool. You say that um, there is a bright future as far as the climate goes, as far as nature goes. Now, what do you have to say? Um, what do you think people should do about those things? What is your call to those people? Mm -hmm. I think that people maybe, um um have some new good habits they do now I'm, i i don't know maybe people uh, fly less drive less and things like that or um yeah go more outside be in nature and things like that that's it i think i would say that they should um keep these habits and um yeah don't for that i just would <laughs> I don't know. I, I would say that they um, should keep these habits and continue doing um, these things they learned during this crisis and to take um, nothing for granted and yeah and what people should do. That sounds <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing. Okay. The ECHO Foundation was created by Nobel Peace Laureate Ellie Wiesel and family therapist Stephanie Ansaldo to promote justice, tolerance, and humanity at home and abroad. Based in Charlotte, North Carolina, ECHO enlists notable humanitarians to inspire the next generation of humanitarians through student-led initiatives. For more information about the ECHO Foundation, visit www.echofoundation.org or follow our Facebook and Instagram pages.